so to the glory of God. Isaiah 117 reminds us to do that. Learn to do well. Another use of the word learn is to learn to do righteousness. Learn to do righteousness and learn righteousness and to do it. Isaiah 26, 9 and 10 refers to this, uh, to this practice. Learn to do righteousness. Another use, you learn ways, the ways of God and the ways of uh, righteousness. Learn to do them. So you see, these are important things, uh, brethren, to know how to, how to navigate in this world, to learn, become familiar with fearing God, know what that means, to learn God's statutes and judgments, be acquainted with what he's, statutes and judgments, these are things that can't change. They're just This is the way it is. Learn what God has said about things and what stands and what doesn't stand. Become familiar with it. Learn to, learn to do what God says. Become expert. Don't be telling people, you know how it is, that every time God says something, we don't want to do it. Some say, yeah, that's the way we are. Don't. Learn to do. Amen. And learn not to do what the, those who don't know God do. And learn about righteousness and learn the ways of the Lord. Now let's make some preliminary observations before we go any further in this. Well, let me give this text from uh, Jeremiah 12, 16. This is quite a remarkable statement. God's talking to the people that were among whom his people were living. It's a come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people. Talking to heathen people. They will learn the ways of my people to swear by my name the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal then they shall be built in the midst of my people. What does he mean? He said, well, the heathen people taught my people, he said, to, to think about Baal when they did anything. That was an idol. But if they learn the ways of my people, my people depend on me. They still do. Amen. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You know this already, but it's just good to say it. People that aren't depending on God aren't his people. It doesn't make it... It doesn't make any difference what they say. Just, yeah. just wipe it from your mind. Anyone that's not depending on God, that's not his people. Because his people have ways. They have tendencies. They have inclinations. There's certain manners. It all boil down to that they trust in the Lord. Now let's like make some preliminary observations. First, in the kingdom of God, ignorance about God is a serious transgression. It's not innocent. Yeah, what about a beginner? That's how we all started. We all started not knowing much, but we better not be staying there. That's not the manner of the kingdom of God. It's not the manner. You read in Scripture about any personality that was in heaven that spoke, and you see if you can find any of them that asked questions because they didn't know something. Just go through the Scripture. Some angels spoke from heaven. See if they, see if they were knowledgeable or unknowledgeable. If Jesus speaks from heaven, see if he's knowledgeable or unknowledgeable. See, if the Holy Spirit knows what he's speaking about or doesn't, you'll find every personality from heaven that spoke was knowledgeable. Yeah. God expects thy will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. People in heaven know what's going on. People on earth, same thing. Ignorance is lethal. I'll maybe support this with some of the word of God. Romans, the first chapter, depicts the Gentile world. That's the world to whom God had not spoken, to whom he hadn't given any law. And they, they got in a degenerate situation. They kept getting worse, 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 till it ended up at the bottom rung of the ladder, women with women and men with women, uh, men with men. Sodomy, or for the world calls it homosexuality. That's kind of a toned-down word. Sodomy is the right word. God speaks about this several places. This is like the bottom rung of the ladder. This is like you, you've gone a long way before you get here. Someone says, you know, I love God, but I just, I have this inclination, I'm a man, I have this inclination to man. This, this is a lot of hogwash. A lot of stuff preceded that. And here, here's what he boils it down, Romans 1.13. He says, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Romans, the first chapter around verse 28 and so forth, he says that the 
Gentiles refuse to retain God in their knowledge. That is, God reveals something about himself in nature, and they remained ignorant of that. And as a result, they went down the moral ladder of degradation. Again, and Paul, in keeping with this, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Here's Romans 11.25. I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery. That you be wise in your own conceits. That blindness, in part, has happened to Israel. See, this has confounded theologians through the years. Why, did, why was Israel cut off? Were all of them cut off or some of them cut off? Paul says, I don't want you ignorant about this. I want you to learn what this is about. That all of Israel hasn't been rejected. Some of, them were, some of them were removed because of their unbelief. I don't want you to be ignorant of it because you can be removed because of unbelief too. See, I don't want you ignorant. Here's another one. So 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Our fathers, as Israel, passed through the cloud and through the sea. As they delivered to the Red Sea, they all got safely across. All, every last one of them got safely across the Red Sea. Every one of them. But they all didn't get into Canaan. Right. He said, I would not have you ignorant of this. Someone comes to you and they say, look, God loves you. He's not going to, he's not going to, nothing can separate you from his love. And just no matter what you do, everything will be all right. He says, look, I don't want you to be ignorant because this is, this, this doctrine doesn't hold up because God doesn't honor this doctrine because he destroyed some of the people that he saved out of the land of Egypt. Right. Huh? Yeah. No, I don't want you ignorant about this. Then in Corinth, there, there was a lot of confusion about spiritual gifts. There is today, too. Some people, they just were, were kind of showboating what they were doing. Some people used spiritual gifts, and no one knew what they were talking about, and they thought that was all right. Oh, this, this still happens today, too. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, I, concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant about this. Yeah, I'm showing you the importance of learn. It's the, that's the opposite or antithesis of ignorant. Ignorance, the world says ignorance is bliss. <laughs> this is not true in Christ Jesus. Or what you don't know can't hurt you. See that? But this is not true in Christ Jesus. Well, let's just be even more specific about it. Ephesians 4.18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated, that means you're cut off from, the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That's quite a header because of the blindness of their heart. That's quite remarkable. You mean to tell me that if I'm ignorant of the of the God that I'll be that I'll I'll be blind? Yeah, yeah. That's right. You'll be you'll be God's enemy. Who do you think is going to win that? Who do you think is going to win that conflict? You fight against God. Who do you think is going to win? Huh? There's no question about this. Or do you think God doesn't fight? You, you don't think that, do you? He fought against Israel's enemies. He fought them. See? Why? Because they were against him. That's why. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant about, about this, that ignorance alienates you from God. First right. Thessalonians 4.13 says, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep of them that died. They were confused about the coming of Christ. They thought people that died had missed the coming of Christ. So I don't want you to be ignorant about this. 2 Peter 3, 8 says, Beloved, be not ignorant. Don't be ignorant. This one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years or a thousand years is one day. So don't be saying, well, he probably isn't going to come for a long time. Uh, so everything be all right. He hasn't come yet. 